In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. I'd like to welcome you to the second of our virtual Masses, and I'd like to begin by saying a very big thank you to all of you for your emails, uh, your uh, comments, and uh, your phone calls. I'm really pleased that so many people have been able to find this helpful in the uh, very difficult times that we are experiencing at this moment. Today we celebrate the fifth Sunday of Lent, and on Sunday we also celebrate the uh, dedication of England as the Dowry of Mary. And at the end of this Mass, uh, we will have the opportunity to pray in front of the statue of Our Lady that we have in the church as we ask for her blessing upon our country and upon our families, particularly at this time. As we celebrate this Mass, we bring before the Lord our needs, our fears, and our sins, and we place them at the foot of the cross as we ask him to be with us, to strengthen us, and to renew us in his image. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. And may almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting light. Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God, May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The Lord says this, I am now going to open your graves. I mean to raise you from your graves, my people, and lead you back to the soil of Israel. And you will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, my people. And I shall put my spirit in you, and you will live. And I shall resettle you on your own soil. And you will know that I, the Lord, have said and done this. It is the Lord who speaks. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm. The response is, with the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. O oh, let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleading. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. If you, O oh Lord, should mark our guilt, Lord, who would survive? But with you is found forgiveness. For this we revere you. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. My soul is waiting for the Lord, I count on his word. My soul is longing for the Lord, more than watchman for daybreak. Let the watchman count on daybreak, and Israel on the Lord. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Because with the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption, Israel indeed he will redeem from all its iniquity. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. The second reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. People who are interested only in unspiritual things can never be pleasing to God. Your interests, however, are not in the unspiritual, but in the spiritual, since the Spirit of God has made his home in you. In fact, 
unless you possessed the spirit of Christ, you would not belong to him. Though your body may be dead, it is because of sin. But if Christ is in you, then your spirit is life itself, because you have been justified. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, then he who raised Jesus from the dead will give life to your own mortal bodies through his spirit living in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We greet the gospel with the gospel acclamation. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me will never die. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. The sisters Martha and Mary sent this message to Jesus. Lord, the man you love is ill. On receiving the message, Jesus said this sickness will not end in death, but in God's glory. And through it, the Son of God will be glorified. Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Yet when he learned that Lazarus was ill, he stayed where he was for two more days before saying to the disciples, let us go to Judea. On arriving, Jesus found that Lazarus had been in the tomb for four days already. When Martha heard that Jesus had come, she went to meet him. Mary remained sitting in the house. Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, whatever you ask of God, he will grant you. Your brother, said Jesus to her, will rise again. Martha said, I know he will rise again at the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. If anyone believes in me, even though he dies, he will live. And whoever lives, and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she said, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who was to come into this world. Jesus said in great distress with a sigh that came straight from the heart, where have you put him? They said, see how much he loved him. But there were some who remarked, he opened the eyes of the blind man could he not have prevented this man's death? Still sighing, Jesus reached the tomb. It was a cave with a stone to close the opening. Jesus said, take the stone away. Martha said to him, Lord, by now he will smell. This is the fourth day. Jesus replied, have I not told you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing my prayer. I knew indeed that you always hear me, but I speak for the sake of all of those who stand around me, so that they may believe that it was you who sent me. When he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, hear come out. The dead man came out, his feet and hands bound with bands of stuff and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, unbind him, let him go free. Many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what he did, believed in him. The gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Whenever a crisis occurs, it tends to produce extremes of behavior. Not only does it bring out the best in people, but it also, sadly, brings out the worst. 
I think we can say that we have seen both reactions on display this week. After the government asked for volunteers to assist the National Health Service, they were hoping for 250,000 people to come forward. In the end, over half a million people volunteered, double the amount that they were expecting. We also had the heartening spectacle of people across the country showing their appreciation of the work of our emergency services by coming outside and applauding them on Thursday night. At the other end of the spectrum, there were the harrowing scenes from Italy and Spain, where the hospital wards and the morgues are rapidly filling up. Particularly upsetting was the news that the residents in some Spanish nursing homes had been left to die after the staff who were looking after them fled to escape being infected. Just as we see these contrasting attitudes in our own time, so we also see them displayed in today's gospel. On the one hand, we have the intense grief that Lazarus's sister Martha shows after the death of her brother. This grief is summed up in Martha's reproachful statement to Jesus. If you had been here, my brother would not have died. But we also see revealed in the gospel the transformative power of Jesus, a power which is encapsulated by his statement to Martha. I am the resurrection and the life. If anyone believes in me, even though he dies, he will live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. To people who have no faith, life is just a process from birth to dust, and death comes as the final humiliation. But the raising of Lazarus shows us that the life we're searching for isn't just an extension of physical life. Instead, it is the promise of eternal life with God. For the Christian, death is the great moment of life because our faith is rooted in the truth of Jesus's own death and resurrection. While the pain of bereavement leads many to ask the question that Martha asked, if only you had been here, we mustn't allow the darkness of death's shadow to cloud our days. Instead, the story of Lazarus tells us that it's through faith that we're able to share in the new world that Jesus is bringing about. And it's through faith that we are able to come to terms with the pain of death. If any good has come out of the extraordinary situation that we're currently in, it is that it's helped all of us to have a renewed appreciation of the simple pleasures of life those pleasures that previously we had taken for granted. Coffee with a friend, a meal out, having a haircut, being able to buy toilet roll. In his Urbi et Orbi address on Friday, Pope Francis said that this moment in history is a time of choosing, a time to choose what matters in life and what passes away. A time to separate what is necessary from what is not. It is a time to get our lives back on track with regard to you, Lord, and to others. Our prayer in these last few weeks of Lent is that while we may be isolating ourselves physically, we may do all that we can to avoid isolating ourselves spiritually both from God and from each other. So together now we say the creed, the prayer of the church. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
of all things, visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became him. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We turn now in prayer to the Father who through the life, death, and resurrection of his Son, Jesus Christ, has brought us back to the life of friendship with him, and we make our request. We pray for our Holy Father and for the bishops of the Church. May they proclaim through the witness of their lives the saving power of Christ's resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our, our emergency services and for all of those who are on the front line in the fight against the coronavirus. May they be strengthened in their life-saving love. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. On the feast of the rededication of England as the dowry of Mary, we pray for our country that we may remain united in these uncertain times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For engaged couples due to get married in our parish, who, because of the current situation, are not able to celebrate their love for each other in the sacrament of matrimony. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick. May they be comforted by recognizing the strength of God's love for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the dead. May they share the company of Jesus, who is the resurrection and the life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask for the prayers of Our Lady of Wilson as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Heavenly Father, you planted within our hearts the hope of eternal life. Bring us and all those we love to the fullness of that new life of grace. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become the bread of life. Blessed be God. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Through the divine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual gift. Blessed be God forever.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy truth. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as true man he wept for Lazarus his friend, and as eternal God raised him from the tomb. Just as taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. If you are following this Mass with your missiles, I will be using the third Eucharistic you are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up in you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for men, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and his ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. 
Lord, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and the blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her sons, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, Alan, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your peace. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your people. We pray especially in this Mass for the repose of the soul of Michael the Lord. In heaven we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. O Him, and with the man in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. And the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and ever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be.
you know that you're not able to receive the Eucharist, the body and the blood of Christ. So I'd ask you now to join me in saying an act of spiritual communion. This prayer is found in this week's newsletter, which is available on the parish website. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Just before the final blessing, I'd like to assure you of my prayers for all of you, particularly those of you who are self-isolating at this time, and also for those of you who are experiencing uh, financial hardships. Pray that uh, we may soon be able to uh, get out of the situation that we are facing ourselves. Next Sunday is Palm Sunday, and we're going to be putting up resources uh, during the week on the parish website for Palm Sunday. So do please keep an eye on the uh, website. We're hoping uh, that uh, children will be able to download a palm that they will be able to colour in so that they will be able to join in the uh, palm uh, procession. And we're hoping that uh, we'll be able to um, film as many of the Holy Week services uh, as we can. So the best thing to do is just to keep an eye on the parish website for all of them. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.